Hi everyone, welcome to Cactus Caffeine and my name is Anna. So you are watching part 2 now of my complete tour of my collection. So if you haven't seen part 1, I will put a link up on your screen and down on the description box below. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get this tour started. Alright, and on to the next genus of the cactus sea family. This is Gymnocalysium. Alright, so this uh, flowers every year. And the flowers, they open late in the afternoon. Right now, it's already almost nighttime. So I only have one left. I am not sure. I think this is a Gymnocalysium baldianum. Definitely, this is a baldianum. Somehow, the spines are different. Although, the flowers, they are both. Uh, the same red color so I'm not a hundred percent sure on this one this one has no ID as well oh the flowers were open earlier but now they are closed and then I have some purple colored gymnocalysium here I love this one this hasn't flowered this is new but look at the color of that body that is the name of this gymno and I also like this one this one it doesn't change the color doesn't change it always stays purple very nice and then I also have a few on the bottom rack so here are some more gymno coliseums that I have and this is um the Ragon and CI. So this was also open earlier. This flowered much earlier, so it has formed a seed pod. It fell off, but can you see the seeds? So I still have to harvest the seeds from that. And that one still has seed pods attached to it. This two Christate cactus here, I don't know what they are. They were just given to me. Although I like their golden yellow color of spines. So last year, I put this in full sun and it did not like it. So I placed it in a partial shade. It's under a 70% shade cloth. And it is performing a lot better. So I am not sure. This might be some kind of an epiphytic Christate cactus. So if you guys know, tell me the ID of this one. And it hasn't flowered for me. So that's why it is very hard to ID this cactus. Now let's move on to another genus, which for me is the most difficult that I have in my collection. And that is these Astrophytum. So I don't seem to be having too much luck with Astrophytum. If you see my re recent uh, video on cactus rotting, I had one that rotted. It was the Nudum variety, like this one. Fortunately, I have another one because I bought two of them. It does have a bud, but I'm not sure if hopefully it will continue to develop because most of these or uh, three of these astrophytum form buds but they all drop their buds so they did not form so this one i believe this is not developing as well because it has been like this for a few months oh yeah so it's not see it dropped it it's not even attached to it anymore so anyway uh, these are my astrophytum as you can see this has sunburn <laughs> not so pretty let's do it like that so I have one here that's my oldest one so it has grown very very big but it hasn't still flowered for me so I haven't cracked the secret yet on uh, properly growing this astrophytum cacti here is my small euphorbia collection so that is a variegated corn cob euphorbia and ha huh, obisa so i've been wanting this for a long long time i finally found one 
and these two are the ones that were given to me by Emily of the succulent greenhouse I like this one so it was given to me as a cutting but I know it has already rooted because it flowered and there are tiny leaves forming on top and then in here I have my euphorbia milii so they are already done flowering so they flowered early in spring and that is the ready red so when it was cold in winter the leaves are red or purple but now that it's uh, spring and summer the leaves have turned green again This time we are moving on to another type of succulent. Let me show you my little aloe collection. This is aloe delta. I am not sure if it's delta dawn or delta lights because they look uh, similar. So I'm not sure which type of delta I have. This is Hemin GI. And then this is aloe lizard lips. I like this one. I like the markings on the leaves. And then this is aloe snowstorm. Okay, when stressed, this has a tendency to turn brown instead of red. So I'm trying to keep it in a shadier position because I prefer it to be green. Although, to, like this one, it still has a tinge of brown. It's beautiful either way, so it just depends on your preference. But I prefer it to be green in color. So that is... Agasteria. This one is Agasteria. This is Aloe Crosby's prolific. Very prolific indeed. So that one came from this mother plant right here. This has given me so many pops. Okay. And um, moving over in here. This one is Tiger Aloe. It just finished blooming and then Christmas aloe Christmas Carol I mean aloe Christmas Carol and then aloe oik I love aloes that have red markings on the side red and green like this one and then I have another one right here this is aloe fire I forgot aloe firecracker okay aloe firecracker and then I have a couple of variegated aloes here this one is giving me a lot of variegated pops as well okay so i'm here in my front porch because i have a couple here this is aloe little gem and this is a blue elf aloe which is which just finished all its bloom spikes so can you imagine it was full of orange flowers like a month ago so it just finished its blooming season. And now this is my small collection of the rather hard to find cacti. I don't want to call them rare. They're just hard to find where I live. So starting off with this one. This is a Pygmaeus cereus. This is a tiny one but this is very slow growing. And then I have a steno cactus. And then these two, these are both Ariosis. So this is another Ariosis with fruit pods on top, seed pods on top. So hopefully I will be able to germinate the seeds on those. And then moving on, these two are Copiapoa. This one is a Copiapoa calderana that's from Daz of Cacti Mania. And then this one is another Copiapoa. This is from Rob Roy. So I got this from Rob Roy. 
So just take a look at that hair or fur on top of it. So unique. And then finally, I have my mellow cacti here. So this is the Azureus. Nice blue color in it. And then I have a mature mellow cactus right there. I will flash a name on the screen of this mellow cactus. Here is another hard to find cacti. So this is an Obregonia. So this again is from Cacti Mania. So I had it outdoors for a while during early spring, but now that we are getting um, hotter, I decided to keep this inside my house by a window where it gets very early morning sunlight so along with my seedlings but yeah if anything happens to any of these guys i will have many many sleepless nights so fingers crossed that they all will thrive for me under this tree is where i have all my epiphytic cacti and some succulents hanging so most of these, um, these are just the first summer that they will experience. So we will find out if they will survive our summer. And uh, hopefully the uh, shade of the tree will help them. So this is the um, Rick Rack Cactus. And I have a few, three different types on this hanging basket right here. So I did not have enough pots so I ended up planting them all together in that basket and then this one uh, two types of succulents hanging succulents too so I have on one side these are string of pearls and then on the other side are string of dolphins These are my tail cacti. <laughs> this, I believe, is a monkey's tail. This is a rat's tail cactus. This is. This is the aeonium planter that I did a few months ago. So there is one that died back in here. So I just cut it down and then planted it. I think it's rooted by now because it's growing. But this is entering its dormant state. So it has grown very tall and very leggy. And if you can see this, it is starting to close. So it is getting hot now here in Vegas. So these aeoniums are starting to go dormant right now. On this table, I have all my mammillaria. So many of my mammillarias are the first one that bloomed. So not all of them have uh, blooms right now, but some are still uh, continuing to produce blooms. Like for this one, I would say this is already the second flush of blooms that it gave me this uh, spring season. Okay, so many mammillaria, they have small flowers. But some of them, you will be surprised because they have uh, rather big flowers for a mammillaria like this one. This is a mammillaria guelzoiana. It has pretty big flowers. And also, if you can get hold of a mammillopsis, a mammillaria senilis or mammillopsis senilis, this is the one. This also has big, bright red flowers. Okay. And this one is the first time blooming for me, but looking at the buds, I would say it will also give me big flowers. Two of my mammillaria are in this bowl arrangement that I made. So this is my mammillaria spinosissima. And this one right here is a mammillaria microhelia. This has dark pink flowers. 
while this one has light pink flowers then on this section of my garden this is my mammillaria bowl so all of the cacti that you see in this arrangement they are all mammillarias All right, now it's time to do an update on my mini desert garden. So I want to show you the plants that I have here. So my mini desert garden is now one year old. Yes, I just started this last year. So around the same time to last year. So all these guys have been here for one year now. So over there at the very end, that is a Trichocereus grandiflora. So ever since I planted it in the ground, it just grew very, very big. I wonder how big it will get. And then in that pot, this is an Apontia cinnamon bunny ears. And then down below it, oh, I love this one. This is an Apontia santerita. And just look at that stressed color on the pads. So this one, it stays purple like that because in the winter it gets cold. So it's purple and now it's stressed with the sun and it's still it is still purple so i just love that one i want this to really grow very tall and then this is a carrot cup cactus um i did a video on this one when it was covered with orange flowers it was so beautiful and then moving on this one is an agave ferdinandi Regis agave and then here in front this is Apontia aurea this produces uh, purple beautiful purple flowers that is a um, miniature pencil choya and one of my favorite here in my garden this is my totem pole cactus so this is totally spineless guys totally spineless it flowered for me uh, but I wasn't able to film or take a picture of the flower but it's the flowers are not re really very attractive they are very small so anyway I think there are a few buds forming right now hopefully I will get to take a picture of the flower this time and then on the back there those are all Apontias those are the Apontia Piña Colada. And then that is an artichoke agave, which is very, very hardy. And then a couple of rainbow hedgehogs right here, which are temporarily still planted in terracotta pots. But this year, I plan to plant them in the ground because the first year was just a test if they will survive, you know, the harsh weather here. But they did and they flowered so now i'm convinced they can stay in this spot or in that spot right there so i will be planting them in the ground soon i also have another patch of garden here this is actually my very first one even before i started collecting cactus this is the first garden i made so i have here not all cactus but they are all desert plants all plants that will survive in the desert so starting with this one this is actually a blue glow agave but because it is out here in the sun instead of uh, its usual color dark green like bluish color it turned light green because of uh, being out here in the sun but it is beautiful and then I have three large ficus indica i think that's this opontia so i keep uh taking off some of the pads because they are getting top heavy so every year i prune it i take off some of the pads like this one i need to take that out because it's starting to lean but they just love it in the ground and they will grow very very big they haven't flowered for me yet hopefully soon it will but yeah those are my three very large ficus indica and they are one of the first 
cactus that I had here in the backyard even before I started collecting cactus. And down below here, I actually have a ferro cactus. This is a ferro cactus lattice penis. And it does flower, it has purple flowers, and every time it flowers, it forms a seed pod. But um, I'm puzzled because every time I open the seed pods on this one, it is empty. <laughs> so I don't know why. And then this is another Pontia. I don't know what the name of this is, but it is very hardy. It is actually growing rather tall and leggy, so I'm thinking of changing this one i just don't know what to put in here yet but as for now it stays in there and that is the third very big ficus indica that i was telling you about so these are my echinocereus so fortunately one of them is in flower today that is um, rainbow hedgehog cactus Okay, and then I have a few more here. This one is a new addition as well. So I haven't seen the flower yet on that one. And uh, this one too. This one flowered recently. And then these are Echinocereus pentalopus. Pentalopus, yeah. Well, somebody told me that for them to flower, they need a lot of sun. So I placed it in full sun and it burned. <laughs> So I don't know, it did not flower yet this year. I just got them both last year. So it did not flower this year. I might have been doing something wrong with it. So I'm not sure if it needs a lot of sun or part sun. And then some more cacti at the back that has no ID. Oh, this one I, this one I know. This is a fellow cactus set is penis and last but not the least this is the rack where i keep my shade loving plants well not really shade loving but those that appreciate less sun than the cacti so first on the top rack here since this rack still gets sun i have cacti on the topmost shelf so at the back there those are three different types of old man cactus. So the tall one there is a Peruvian old man cactus. And then the middle two here, these are both old man of the Andes. Just a little variation on the spines and the hairs. And um, I forgot what that one is called. But these three here, these are all Alfero cactus. And then... I don't know what this one is. This one is a cardon cactus. And then moving on to the second level here, I have uh, different types actually here. So I have Hawarthia, I have some uh, uh, Falcaria here in front, a Euphorbia. Oh, this is my Euphorbia Poisonii. So if you remember, uh, I got this from California last year and it had all those nice variegated leaves but then winter came and it went into dormancy and it lost all of its leaves i thought it was dead but right now i see new leaves sprouting on top so now it is going back to its um active state of growing okay and then moving on to the bottom shelf so i have some hawarthias here this i like this one the variegated one so this is a hawarthia retusa and this one is a hawarthia mutica so the variegation is underneath the leaves right and um this one is um cactus this is a ripsalis but it likes um less sunlight because when i kept it in the sun it turned all like orange <laughs> so now it's back to being green and a nice hawarthia back there and then on the bottom most rack 
I have a few more. So this one is a Gasteria Little Warty. So I just love the markings on the leaves on that one. It is very, very beautiful. So unfortunately, I do not know the ID on all of these Gasteria except when they are, you know, like given by friends. So they do have labels on them. But for most of them, I do not know the name. Uh, this one was also given to me by Brian of Sass Cactus. He lives in Arizona. So he gave me this Haworthia Atenuata Varigata. And very interesting, that's why I placed them side by side because this is the normal Haworthia Atenuata that is not variegated, the normal green color. And this is how it looks like for the variegated uh, version of it so that wraps up the complete tour of my collection so I hope you like this video guys if you do let me know by giving me a thumbs up and if you like cactus and other desert plants I hope you will click that subscribe button and also hit the bell notification so you get notified whenever I post my new videos. So thank you guys for joining me in this two-part video. I will see you again next time. Bye and cheers!